Waffles. You are locked into the padded room with DJ Waffles on rollingout.com. DJ Waffles on the check-in, man. You already know what it is, your boy DJ Waffles on the check-in, and you're tuned into the padded room live with our special guest, man, Gorgeous George. What's poppin'? What's the deal, man? You know what popping is, man. That's P.O.P. That's profit over problems. You know that, right? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's real money. Yeah. On, <laughs> it's real money on deck, man, tonight, man. So, listen, George, we're going to get right into the meat and potatoes of how you actually got into the music game because you've been doing this for a while, but tell everybody how you got this thing started. Man, I got in the game. Well, you know, Scarface, I don't know. If anybody should know who Scarface is, man. You know what I'm talking about? Like... He signed me to a record deal when I was 14 years old. I sung for him in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we was too young to get in the bathroom in the club. And so the photographer snuck us in the bathroom and we waited in the in the bathroom so that we could sing for him. I was in a singing group first called Camouflage. Mm -hmm. And um, he came in the bathroom and so said, I got a piss, man. And we sung a Curtis Mayfield a cappella melody. Man, and from there, he was like, man, I'm going to sign you boys to a deal, man. Six months later, he signed me to my first record deal. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So, you at, what age is this? This is what? I'm about 14. You're 14. So, you get a deal by Scarface. Like, how do you actually digest that? Like, after being in the bathroom? I didn't know who the fuck he was. <laughs> right. Real deal. You know what I'm talking right. about? I'm 14. You know what I'm talking about? I didn't know who the fuck he was. You right. Because I grew up gospel. I grew up, man, I was a background singer for John P. Key. Mm -hmm. wow. The gospel singer. Wow! I did a duet with Yolanda Adams. I that's my that was my world. You feel what I'm saying? I didn't know about the hip hop and all that shit, man. In my house, we couldn't even listen to secular music. You dig know what I'm saying? Like it was not allowed. Right. You know what I'm talking about? My people's owned a church called Hunter's Memorial right. in Texas, in Houston. So it's like I grew up literally a choir boy singing in the church. So I didn't know who Scarface was. So how did you even cross over into that? Because now, like you said, you're in the secular world, you're making music like this. I crossed over because how? I realized in the secular world, it's more cutthroat. I mean, in, in the gospel world, it was more cutthroat than the secular world. How was that? It's because it's less money. Mm. It's less money to be made. Right. And so the people at the top ain't letting nobody in. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Because the market share is only so big. Mm -hmm. So you so you really taking accountability business when it comes to the music. Everything is business. Everything is business. I mean, if you're not looking at it from a business perspective and you 100% just I'm gonna be an artist, then you're really just wasting your time because the yeah, at the end of the day you gonna you gonna end up like our forefathers did, like your you know what I'm talking about like your um was it to the fruity who what's his name Little Rich and all that they was artists right but they broke. You know what I'm talking about? They, they got a tour for the rest of their life just to make ends meet mm -hmm. because they didn't understand the business. Mm -hmm. And the future generations should learn from the previous generations. So what did, what did you gain out of being signed to Scarface at that point in time? Man, I he was the first cat who put bread in my pocket for my talent. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So I gained a knowledge of what's right and what's wrong with the music industry as I saw it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I walked away from the music industry for about 10 years. I was like, I'm not with this shit. You know what I'm saying? I sold millions of records. And I felt I wasn't compensated for it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't his fault because Face was signed to somebody. Right. We signed to Face and he signed to somebody else. And you got a distributor. You got to understand what tears mean. You know what I'm talking about? Right. You got a distributor. You got a record company. You got a production company. Then another record company. <laughs> By the time we get to you, you ain't got shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, nah, man. I ain't with this. Unless I can be my own boss, I'm not doing this shit. So that I walked away from it and, you know, decided to uh, get money for real mm -hmm. by any means. So that didn't work out for you. So basically you was getting peanuts after every all the checks was getting cut and stuff like that. So, Hit records. Right. Soundtracks and... Singles and we all on the radio. They spending my. I had a number one Billboard record. The world is a ghetto. Right. I wasn't living in a number one Billboard house. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't driving a number one Billboard car. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and even at 14, I realized this. Right. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I. You know what I'm talking about? I got love for Brad to this day. We just mm -hmm. got off a tour together. You know right. what I'm saying? We did three tours together. Right. So I got love for him to this day. But at the same time, I'm my own man now. I'm a grown up. You know what I'm saying? I'm not that 14 year old boy. You know what I'm right. saying? So you say you take it. You say you take it back to the drawing board after you figure that. All right, mm -hmm. this is what's not gonna happen. So 
you take 10 years off and you decide to get to a bag in a different way. What type of, what type of bag you was getting in? Like, what was you doing to actually... Being an entrepreneur. entrepreneur. By any means. By any means means by any means. It don't mean by any means but. You know what I'm right. saying? There's no but in by any means. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever I had to do, I tried to sell the dope for a little bit, figured out I'm not good at that because I'm not doing jail for nobody. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, right. And I was like, nah, bro, they giving time away. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> they throwing niggas under the jail. I said, nah, man, them for crumbs. Nah. Right. And so I realized that my conversation was real witty. And right. I realized that females enjoyed my conversation. And I realized that if you got a bunch of females with you, mm-hmm. you can make a lot of money. Because women can walk through doors that you'll never be able to walk through. I agree with you 100%. And so I surrounded myself with beautiful ladies that were like-minded like myself. And we together made a bunch of motherfucking money. And so now, now that you 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 get to the point where you're making this money, like what type of investments did you make? Because obviously you got back into the music. So take me to the time that you started to make the money. Because I know you was going through the ups and downs, the trials and the error of mm. actually trying this new entrepreneurship. Yeah, man. Because it ain't it ain't, <laughs> ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun, man. You know what I'm talking about? Like it is not easy, man. Being that greasy, man. But what I did was I realized that I had to start businesses, and at the age of seventeen. I started right. my own network cabling company. Wow. Yeah. And How did that work out for you? I sold it for $5 million eventually. So it worked out pretty good for me. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's what it was about. Like, um, it was called Wired America. And what I did was I found a niche because I remember we had went to, uh, I had went to Miami and we stayed in a, a rental condo and it had smart houses with, with integrated wiring. Right, which means that all the all the cable went to a central location, mm-hmm. and you could plug and play. They weren't doing that in Texas. Right. So I brought that to Texas. I went to a developer called David Powers. He said, "Let me do your house for free." It's a new neighborhood called North Point. Went did the house, wired it myself. Me and my brother had one drill, one generator, and an F one fifty that I bought for eight hundred and fifty dollars, a little raggedy truck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I went. I was seventeen years old, mind you. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And I went out there and I wired that house, made it look good. When it came to trim, I trimmed it. I put the box in the closet upstairs, the way you right. go plug and play. And it was like, oh my goodness! Ended up doing nineteen neighborhoods for this guy. And. It worked hard, hard. Did it for nine years. See, that was the ten years that I took off from the industry. Right, but you was getting to a real bag at the same time. Because I started my own business. Right. And then I sold that business for a little bit over five million. Well, actually, I brokered a deal. Somebody did the deal for me with a conglomerate called Oasis Communications. And um, we we did the deal. You know, Japanese, they, they got money. Because, see, they can't get... They can't start businesses over here because they're not national citizens. Right. They have to buy businesses. Mm-hmm. So they buy businesses that are already established because they need the money. Because, see, a lot of people don't understand how it works. See, most gu- most foreign countries need American currency. They need American fiat. Right. Because they can't buy oil unless they have American fiat. Mm-hmm. Like, the Federal Reserve note is the only thing, because APEC, that's the only way you can buy oil. You can't buy it with the yen. You can't buy it with the franc. You can't buy it with the, you know what I'm saying? You right. can't. You cannot. You cannot buy oil with it. Right. So they need to start making American money to buy oil to run their industry. So these companies buy small companies in America. See, when you know business, right. you understand these things. But a lot of people don't know business. So, George, so tell me this. If you can make... If you can sell a business for $5 million, mm-hmm. then you got the business, you got the witty smarts, you got the females and stuff like that. What makes you decide to do rap music? Because it's all about that wittiness. Right. That's what rap music is. Rap music is me being able to spit my shit and you looking at me like, oh, he really fucking said that. Oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, that's what rap music is about. Like... Even, you know, LL Cool J to Cool Mo D, all these cats was spitting shit that they did that other cats weren't doing. Right. I'm doing shit that other cats not doing, so why can't I spit my shit? Mm. You know what I'm talking about? I'm just a different kind of hustler. I'm a new age hustler. I'm a smart one. You know what I'm talking about? I'm on publishing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on masters. You know what I'm saying? Right. So they don't like me at the top, but they can't do nothing about it. They can't do shit because the public deems what's relevant and what's not relevant. You feel what I'm saying? So, 
so basically with the with the smarts that you have you don't even have to be aggressive you just have to be you just have to be have smart to be witty right mm-hmm. you gotta be wiry and witty you know what I'm talking about like the biggest person ain't always the one you gotta get a ball to when he run when playing football right the, the linebackers is big right but the running back ain't the biggest one on the team he the one who can fit in all the holes you know what I'm saying and so you, you you that guy I'm that guy I can hit all the pockets all right so you take you take off the you take off the ten years. You go make a couple millions and stuff like that, and then you're like, all right, well, I really want to do is the music thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's my passion. That's your passion. That's my passion. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I, I was never gonna be a starving artist. I don't believe in that shit. I don't believe in starving nothing. I starving artists, starving poets, starving nothing. The word starving associated just with make me sense. just don't go together. Right. Yeah. So I made my bread first, and then I said if. I can get back into music and make it make sense. I'll do it, or else I'll just make records and jam it in my Rolls Royce as I'm going from hood to hood. I, I you know, what I'm saying <laughs> I can listen to it myself and be happy. But then you have a longing for other people to right. admire what you've done. You know wow. what I'm saying? See, I don't think I don't think artists actually understand that part. They won't say it, but it's just something that they just do. Mm-hmm. They just be like, all right, well, this is what I'm gonna do. Mm-hmm. But you actually said it. A lot of artists don't don't say it like that. You want some people to actually admire like, what to, I've done. Right. Yeah, I want them to be like, man, I like that. You know, so or I don't like that. Right. Either way it go, interaction. You know what I'm saying? You want to know where you stand on the level. That's like with anything. I don't have to be the fastest person, but acknowledge that I got on the motherfucking track. Right. And now that I finished the motherfucking marathon, you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> I ran these fucking 13 miles. You dig what I'm saying? I ain't got to come in first, but I finished. Right. I finished the fucking race. You see what I'm saying? And so that's what doing music is with me. Like, you don't never have to say I'm the best rapper, I'm the best this, but guess what? I'm in the game. I'm doing it. I'm doing something that people can look back when you open up my book. Be like, hey, man, I remember that. Or that song, I remember when I was doing this, and I it, a song becomes nostalgic after, uh, you know, after time. Right. I want that nostalgia behind something I've done. You feel what I'm saying? Because I remember, I know when I listen to certain songs from my past, and the dudes and I be like, oh shit, right? I remember <laughs> that. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> I want my song to be like that for somebody. So take me to the first record that you made after the hiatus, the ten years. You got to this point. I got my bag up. Got my chips up. I did a song called "I Get It In" with Bun right. B. Wow. I okay. get it in. Major money pimping, man. I can be whoever you want me to be, but you won't see me unless you up in VIP. I get it in. I get it in. I get it in. I get. That song, man. I did that song, man. I thought. I thought <laughs> I was gonna blow the fuck up. <laughs> I said, oh shit, I'm gonna blow Gorgeous George on deck. <laughs> and that shit didn't go nowhere, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that shit didn't go nowhere, but it ended in my hood, you know Wait, what I'm saying? They were riding with it. And did it go double plastic spoons? Man, though? it went double plastic sporks. <laughs> you know what a spork is, right? It's a spoof. <laughs> Lord but if you can't laugh at yourself, man, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, I don't take this shit too seriously because when you do, that's when you get your feelings hurt. Right. You can't hurt my feelings. You can't say, oh, that song was trash. And I'd be like, man, why you say my song? I ain't fucking, I'll make another one. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, come on, man. It's just fucking music. So when did you know that you was on to something? I've been through it because I was producing and writing for cats for years. I just had to find out what the people wanted from me. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Like, right. You can make all kinds of stuff, but you never know what people want to hear from you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I play all instruments, you know what I'm talking about? So I've been producing for cats in Houston, Texas, from Slim to Row to anybody, Power, anybody you name, the Ghetto Boys, you know what I'm saying? Anybody who came through rap a lot, man, like making tracks and stuff was nothing. So I've been behind the scenes for a long time, but it's like, I didn't know what they wanted from me as an artist. I didn't even, man, I went through so many names as an artist to begin with. I just wait, hold like on. Gorgeous George. Hold on, wait. Because that, like, Gorgeous George just sounds like the epitome of some real nigga shit. Like, I just got to that point mm-hmm. where I'm at right now. Tell me about these these names that you had before you even got to the point of Gorgeous George. Please. I was Major Money first. It always sounded like some money. Okay. First name Major, last name Money, because when you see me, you see the money coming. That's what it was. You feel what I'm saying? So, I was Major Money first. And then after I went for major money, I went to Young Nino because in the streets everybody called me Lenino. Okay. And I was like, nah, there's too many youngs out here. You know what I'm saying? So I did major money for about a year, but then they didn't. So they they couldn't uh, break down the street 
major money from the artist major money because okay. I was major money in the streets for real for real that was my P name you feel what I'm saying so I was like they just looking at that's a P who fucking doing music they didn't respect my music ability mm-hmm. so then I said I can't use that name then I went to Young Nino there was too many Youngs I got caught up in the whole Young Jeezy Young Jock all these didn't, that didn't work and I said you know what fuck all this shit I'm gonna come up with a name that that if you ain't, if you don't know it, you'll never know it. And once you learn it, you can't forget it. I said, I'm Gorgeous George the Pimp God. That's the whole name. Gorgeous George the Pimp God. Like a pimp name slick back. You got to say the whole thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to say the whole thing. And so, so, like, so they had to break it down from... Gorgeous from George the Pimp God. You know what I'm saying? And so I was like, okay, that's a name. That's a title. That's like Sir Duke of Ellington. or You know what I'm saying? Like... It's a real royal regal name. And so I was like, all right, done deal. So Gorgeous George the Pimp Guard is what it was. And it stuck. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't expect for that one to stick. And now, so now when people's actually asking you your name, it's like, this would make sense. And why do you run with that name anyway? Because my conversation is gorgeous and most motherfuckers can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> to know me is to love me, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to understand where I'm coming from, man. I'm living life, man. A lot of people are born to die, but they don't live along the way. When and they- I made sure that I was going to live to the fullest, man. If I die tomorrow, man, guess what? They going to open up the book and say, man, that boy was a fucking fool. You know what I'm saying? Like, he had fun with this shit. So, God forbid if you was to die today and tomorrow, mm-hmm. who, 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 what that 20000 going to go to that they supposed to be making for you right now? Shh. We, it's too, my we can, kids. Okay, all right. Because we were trying to get it on. We were trying to get it on the action. Like, if he go out tonight, then we might get this twenty k or something like that. So my kids, like man. I got I got five kids, bro. You know what I'm saying? I got two boys and three girls. So tell me what what the what the day and age like the millennials and stuff like that coming out stuff. They coming out with a lot of different music or whatever stuff like that. What makes you different from everybody in the game? Because I'm different. Mm-hmm. That's what it is, because I'm different. You'll never find another motherfucker like me. You know what I'm talking about? And when you make music, you it, it, it is who you are. My conversation, the things that I choose to talk about. They say nothing new under the sun, but guess what? That's always, it ain't going to never be nothing new under the sun. But how 